And then Romans 9, please. We're going to look at 1 John and then Romans chapter 9. The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 2 that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important that in these last days we are to be aware of what Satan's doing in our world and we are not to be ignorant of what he's doing to deceive people in these last days. We are to keep our eyes open. Okay, so we're going to look at Romans chapter 9, and let's start out right here at verse 3, Romans chapter 9, verse 3. So the wicked world today, you got to realize that they're trying to bring in the new world order, as you might already know. As it, They're trying to bring in a new world order to bring this kind of new world order this world of peace and stability, they have to have somebody to blame. They have to have a group that they can hate, a good reason to. And those are Bible believers. Now, Bible believers, I've given you a video called History of Bible Believers. I encourage you to watch that. But in History of Bible Believers, you realize what we stand upon, what we believe in. Bible believers, we believe that the King James Bible only, all other modern Bibles are false. We also believe in street preaching. Amen. We do street amen. preaching. Yeah, amen. We believe in the fundamentals. So we take the Bible literally. We take the Bible literally. Okay, so we are fundamentalists. So because of that, that's why we are independent Baptist. Now the thing is, Satan needs to somehow attack this group, but how can he attack this group? This group that has suffered persecution from the world and loved the world enough to give the gospel of Jesus Christ, how can he turn this into a hate group if he finds something legitimate? If there is one thing you never want to do, now pay attention to what I'm saying. The reason why one misstep from you can be a very big deal is because the world pays attention more on you than they do with the mistakes of some Hollywood liberal idiot online and on TV. And even the president of the United States, Obama, back then. So look, what they're going to do is that they're going to ignore all those flaws publicly, publicly. But they're going to find one thing from you, one misstep publicly from you, then they have a reason to crucify you. That's what they do. Think about it. Let's look at Romans chapter 9, verse 3. For I wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren and my kinsmen according to the flesh. Now notice right here that the apostle Paul, what did he do with the wicked world, such as his own people? What did he wish for them? He wished that he could even go to hell for their sake. Can you say that? <laughs> That's really hard. But see right here, he loved them enough he loved them enough that he was willing to go to hell. So we are supposed to have a love for this lost, wicked world so that we can lead them to salvation. Of course it makes me angry. It ticks me off more than ever of what these wicked sinners are doing, especially in these last days as they get worse and worse. But, what, but you got to realize this. It's not hatred. It's also grief and pity. You got to realize this. If it makes you more angry, it should increase your love even more. Because you got to realize how blind they are and how you could have been one of them. That's right. Yeah. So that's why it should make you really grieved. Now look at the book of 1 John. 1 John. It's not it's not we're not a terrorist group. We're not a group that goes around hating people. Now look at 1 John chapter 4. Look at verse 8. 1 John 4, 8. He that loveth not, what? Knoweth not God. Knoweth not God. I mean, if you're a saved Christian in the Lord Jesus Christ, you ought to know that feeling of being lost in sin, what you once were, how deceived the world is. And that should actually increase your care for them, not hatred. If you don't love, then if you don't love, you got to realize not knoweth God, knoweth not God for what? God is love. 
So I'm going to ask a question. Do you really know God? Oh, yeah, I know God. Then if you know God's nature, you know that God is love. And he loved them enough to die for them on the cross. Now, I know the verses, and I taught this too. You've got to realize that with lost people, God, God's nature is hatred and wrath upon them right now. That's why he doesn't hesitate to damn them in hell for eternity. You've got to understand. But you also got to realize that his love was given at the cross of Calvary. Right. And 2 Peter 3, 9 says God doesn't want anyone to burn in hell, Amen. but to get saved. Yeah. So, see, there are people who nitpick verses that God is hate, 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 but they don't realize about God's love at the cross of Calvary, what he did to die on the cross for them. Now, the thing is, look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. You don't want to give legitimacy to the wicked one. You don't want to give legitimacy to the wicked one. So we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 53, and we will read verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. So as Jesus Christ was oppressed by his own enemies, you got to realize that we're not a hateful, spiteful people. We are people who care for people's soul and love for people's soul. Jesus loved them enough to die for them and let them spit and mock him. Look what he did. Keep reading. Yet he, uh, yet he opened not his mouth. He brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. That's what it said, right? Do we follow that example? Yeah, because what did Paul say at Romans 8? We are all accounted as sheep for the slaughter. As Jesus Christ, we don't return hatred, we return love. Now the thing is this, by doing that, they can't find anything legitimate to crucify us. But unfortunately, the world, they will nitpick. So what Satan's doing in the last days, I'm not going to cover the liberals. I'm not going to cover Hollywood. I'm not going to cover the Masons, Catholics, uh, elites, and I'm not going to cover the Muslims or the religion. I'm going to talk about this, this one group, these kind of groups of people that Satan will use to accomplish his new world order. To accomplish his new world order, they, they have to have an enemy. And in order to find these enemies where the world can see that these are not peaceful people, people they have to find something legitimate. So what does he do with the King James Bible? He uses certain KJV-only pastors. Yep. And these KJV-only pastors, they go post-trib, that's why they become anti-government and then uh, rebellious. They believe in rebellion. Now, do we submit everything on what government so-and-so will say? No, we don't do that like a bunch of dogs. But what we do, we believe in submitting to the powers that be unless it contradicts doctrine with the scripture Amen. and we say no. That's it. But there are these people who just want to do whatever they want to do. Uh, they just want to go total rebel on the government. So post-trib, they go anti-government, and then they also go anti-Semite, anti-Semitism. So see, these are a hateful group of people, as the liberal world might say. So then you get junk going out, going around on the internet, going around on churches with this replacement theology garbage, where, they, where the whole world can see them as this group of churches who are KJV only. I'm not lying. They are KJV only. But they will have a thing called an anti-Israel conference. They will have ridiculous things where they will post out DVDs and they will wear dumb t-shirts saying, you know, a free Palestine and stuff like that. It is, uh, it is pure wickedness. So see, they find something legitimate with KJV only people. KJV only people. They find something legitimate. Not only that, what's going to happen with other I'm talking about Christians, other Christian churches who are apostate. Who are they going to find the hate group? Boom. Not the NIV people. They all believe in loving and sharing. Not the NASV. Not, not the ESV. But look at these bunch of people. Look at these bunch of people who are anti-Semi and then, you know, who are rebels and who's causing problems and... They don't, and look at that bunch of hate group of people right there. So these Christian churches will come out on the news 
when the news media criticizes KJV only churches, then they compare with the other Christian churches and the other Christian churches say, yeah, we are not those kind of radicals and extremists. So you know what they do? They, they bring the apostasy. This bunch of people bring, help bring in the apostasy even more. They help bring in the New World Order even more. Not only that, street preaching. You got these rebels and jerks out there. All they do, what, what these people do, all they do is that they preach about you're going to hell. That's it. All they do is preach about their sin and tell them they're going to hell. Now, is that true? Yeah, amen, that's true. Amen. Do we preach about that? Of course. We preach that you've sinned because you've sinned against God, you go to hell. No compromise right there. But for crying out loud, why are you telling them about sin? Why are, they, why are you telling them about hellfire? So that they can turn to Christ's love at Calvary to wash away all their sins. Amen. But these idiots out there who are street preachers, see, the, I mean, the devil's doing a great job. They're getting on YouTube. They're getting all the attention on campus. They're on the news. And when people see street preachers, they see them as full of hatred and hatred and hatred. Just all they do is just condemn, condemn, condemn. And tell them they're going to hell, 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 hell. Not only that, when they condemn these people, they even, what they do is use sarcasm. Yep. They use sarcasm and mock these people. You know, they go, all these uh, young women who goes around in short shorts, these street preachers keep saying, you're a whore. Whore, 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 like that. Like, how are you going to win the gospel of Jesus Christ? They use shock tactics. Yep. Yeah. Shock yeah. tactics. They will hold signs that say faggot, stuff like that, at a parade, so that they can incite the intention of the people so that they can preach to them. Preach to them what? To stir up their anger even more? That's not how it's supposed to be done. That is not how it's supposed to be done. So we see right here that, see, Satan's going to use this. That's why they're going to have laws that's going to ban street preaching one day. Thanks to those people. Thanks to those people. We believe in street preaching. We believe in standing for the King James Bible. But now the world has labeled us with these guys. Not only that, independent Baptists. You hear this word all the time. Why do they keep using fundamentalist Muslim? Fundamentalist Muslim. Yeah. Fundamentalist Muslim. To refer to ISIS you know, using a blade to, you know, just, man, it's just awful. Slice off a person's neck off. And they compare that to what? They compare that to fundamentalist Christians who you don't even see doing something crazy like that. Yeah, yeah, some of them on the news may be nuts, but they're not like that. But see, they put them in the same bunch. Then you got Westboro Baptist, Westboro Baptist. These guys come out and they give a bad name to Baptist churches and that's why when you're trying to uh, find a place to rent, and then you, you're, you're kind of careful when you say Baptist because you know what people are going to think. Yeah. See that? So the devil accomplished his goal. The devil accomplished his goal through these kind of people, through this hatred that is going on with Baptist churches. Going at military funerals? What in the world? Holding signs at military funerals? What in the world, man? On the world. You think Jesus Christ went inside funerals? Look at the Bible. When Jesus went to funerals, did he preach hellfire and judgment? Or did he comfort them and even raise their dead ones back Amen. to life? Yeah. Amen. You know what I would do at a funeral? I am the resurrection and the life, as Jesus did at John chapter 11. Right? At the funeral there, what did he say at John 11? I'm the resurrection and the life. He didn't go, you're going to hell? <laughs> what in the world, man? Wicked people. Now, you know what they're going to do? Here's what Bible believers are known for. We believe in exposing yep. the, the errors, right? We believe in exposing errors. But what does the devil do? He finds something legitimate where we go off track. Now go to 1 Timothy, huh? How is this used by the devil's purpose? Look at the book of Timothy. I want to thank God for people who found Bible-believing truth through our YouTube ministry and whatever we did online. I mean, there were people here who also ended up in our church because of that as well. Yeah, but you got to understand this, is that I also have a great disdain concerning online, concerning the Internet. 
because all you got is these bunch of shenanigans, these so-and-sos right there, who don't deserve to even be named, but these so-and-sos right here trying to keep pointing out the error of this guy, the error of that guy, the error of this guy, and you know what the errors they expose are? Bible-believing people. Yep. They, they, what, is that their ministry? Is that what God called them to do? Your job is to expose the errors of your fellow Bible-believing brothers and sisters in Christ. What in the world, man? That is pure wickedness right there. That is pure wickedness. Well, the Lord said I'm supposed to stand up for truth. If you really believe in that in heart, soul, and spirit, where are your videos against John MacArthur? How many videos do you have against James White? How many videos do you have against the Catholic Church and Buddhism and Islam? How many videos do you have? Or how many of 99% of your videos is, is all Bible-believing Christians yeah. who are trying to be KJV only street preaching, fundamental independent Baptist, and exposing the errors? Who, who do you think you are, man? Some of these people, that's why these guys are pure wicked rebels. These guys, and you know this, I guarantee you this, ask them if they go to church. Those kind of people won't. You know why? They don't believe in submission. That's right. These are such prideful people. You know who prideful people are? Prideful people are people who are not willing to submit. That's right. They are not willing to submit. Those are prideful people. You know how the Lord used our internet ministry? You know how God used Bible-believing pastors today? Because they submitted under somebody else Amen. before. You understand that? You know why? Because God can't give a position of authority unless a person learns humility first. Yeah, he is. It is pure wickedness Amen. of some people who have pride issues, pride issues, and that's why they go on their own little charade and ask them simply, how many souls have they led to salvation? How, how, when's the last time they went to church? When's the last time they submitted under somebody? These people want to be teachers, but they don't want to be taught themselves. Right, amen. That is pure wickedness right there. And that's why some of these people will stick in front of a camera until their skin turns white. And if you're 60 years old at that, then you must be an incredible loser, and I feel sorry amen. for you. And some of you people who are out there who are just lost somewhere in the woods, lost somewhere away from Bible believers, all that, I mean, I feel sorry for you. Some of you people who used to attend Bible-believing churches but got out of there because you had a certain pride issue and you hide it with false humility as well, the Lord knows your heart. That's right. yeah, amen. Well, you know, I'm humble in this, I'm humble in that, I'm humble in this, I'm humble in that. Then if you are truly a humble person, why did you make that prideful move? Why did you say those things as a prideful remark? Why did you make that move then? If that wasn't humility, what is that from? That's from pride. One, one lie makes you a liar. One murder makes you a murderer. And I don't care if 99% of the time you didn't commit murder. One time is enough to make you a murderer. I don't care if you're 99% of the time humble on what you appear online. Just that one jerk move that you did, just that one idiotic move that you did as rebellion was enough. It shows what kind of a person you are, pride. That's why you see me, when, when I expose errors, I'm going to expose errors of people who are deceiving and corrupting the world. Yeah. If there were people who believed the King James Bible is the perfect, pure word of God and dispensationalism, me, I, you notice right here, I leave them be because they're doing a good work in saving souls and helping out people. And, I, and if those people criticize me, so be it. I'm glad at least they're trying to save souls out there. Yeah, I'm glad that they're trying to rescue people from wrong doctrine out there. I don't care if their subscribers are bigger than me, smaller than me, right. they have more people or not. If they steal my sheep, man, that hurts me, but I'm at least glad that they can minister to them. I don't care about that. You know why? Because all, I'm all about saving the world, helping the world open their eyes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not get in a competition Amen. of who gets the most fame on YouTube and get so jealous that you just name every person in the book because you're just a miserable old louse. Amen. Just a miserable, bitter old louse. Shame on you, and I know that the Father's going to judge you. And that's my evidence was you guys who saw me online, you can even watch the video. I preached a sermon, I'll bless my enemies. Mm -hmm. I'll bless my enemies in churches and the internet. 
You all watched me in that video, and you all watched me later on in a later YouTube video on what happened with my enemies. So you enemies out there know what I'm talking about. So the Lord can handle you thoroughly. I don't have to handle you. That's right. yeah. I don't have to handle you. But it just disgusts me about prideful people. See, because of this what? Exposing error attitude, what does it do? It brings legitimacy. And the whole world sees that. And while they're thriving and growing more and more, they're tearing each other apart. And while Bible believers are tearing each other apart, they're thriving even more and more and more. Wow. Who do you think you are, man? You're just helping the new world order. Shame on you. Amen. I had some people that I could just crush with two little fingers through all the verses and stuff like that. And there were people, I mean, people in this church know who I'm talking about too. And they would tell me about this kind of stuff. And do you know how tempting it was just to retaliate back on video and to crush them and make them look like losers? But you know why I refuse to do that? I refuse to do that because I don't want to bring legitimacy to this wicked world on what kind of people we are. Amen. I absolutely refuse to look like a circus clown like you. I absolutely refuse. I will only expose the error when I should. When they have an influence that hurts people's souls. That's when I will do it. So I do not apologize if I would expose. You saw me. All right, I'm not the type of people who backs out. You saw tons of my videos. I will call out these people. Right. I will call them out by name. I will even be sarcastic of them and even name call them. I don't hesitate. I don't back down. You know why? I know when to do it. Amen. And I know when not to do it. The last thing my people need is for me to teach every Sunday and every Wednesday on so and 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 so the same person. So if I post one video and that person posts five videos against me, I, what's going to happen? Am I going to be a blessing to my church to post five more videos just on the person who picked on me? No, absolutely not. No, I've got better things to do than be a miserable old louse, sit in front of the camera, and then just try to find criticisms. Amen. What a miserable life. I feel sorry for so-and-sos out there. Okay, so don't bring the new world order. <laughs> Don't give them legitimacy.